Hello, and welcome to part two of my bed tutorial. At the end of part one, you'll remember that we had our three pieces, our mattress, headboard, and footboard, glued together and pinned. Uh, I realized I took my pins out and then realized I didn't have the camera turned on. So just a little tip here. If you're struggling to get your pins out, hopefully you push them all through like I had recommended. If you're struggling to pull them out and you're worried about pulling the heads off your pins, really simple. Just uh, see, oh, stuck. Oh, no. If that happens to you, just lay the thing down and push on it and all the glue will come loose and you can pull your pins out. Little tip. All right, let's get started. So today we're gonna cover our headboard and footboard and mattress in quilt batting and fabric. So give your bed a little eyeball, decide what uh, parts you want to, what you want to be the top, what you want to be the bottom, how you want the footboard to be, how you want the headboard to be. Just have a little look at it and think on it, how you would like it to be covered. And uh, then you'll need to get yourself some quilt batting and choose your fabric. I've chosen a cotton print by the designer Tula Pink. I'm not sure the name of this design. I'll try to figure it out and pop it in the description. So figure out your fabric, how much you're going to need, and uh, you'll want to give it a good press as well. You know just what you do, you do to me Play my emotions like a pair of puppet strings Did it ever occur to you, my heart's more than a toy Please go easy on me, baby So I usually cut about a uh, foot and a half, two feet square of quilt batting for a project like this I lay it out and I put down my mattress, as you just saw, and uh, I wrap it in the quilt batting. Just trying to figure out how much quilt batting I want to use, where to cut it, that sort of thing. Have a little play, see what works best for you. One thing that I do like to do is to make sure that I have most of my quilt batting on the top of the mattress. So here, you can see I'm just eyeballing where I cut it. It's not an exact science. Do what's best for you. And I'll wrap it again. See how uneven I've cut it? Not a big deal. You can trim it up afterwards. I'm not fussy. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting, as you saw, I lay the mattress down on the quilt batting on one end and I'm just cutting off the width of the bed because I'll want more quilt batting on the top of the bed than I will on the bottom. So I'll cut this strip off and I will glue it to the top of the bed. See? More on the top than on the bottom. And then, with the rest of the strip, I just wrap it around. You don't need any quilt batting on the ends, but here I've got three layers on top of the bed and one layer on the bottom. Now, run a bead of glue around the edges of the cardboard mattress and then glue the rectangle of quilt batting onto the top, just like I'm doing here. Send message after message, forward my call. Next day you hear me back like nothing happened at all. Once you've glued the small rectangle to the top, you can trim it up. Then take your glue again and run a bead of it along one side of your mattress. Then working from going over the top and around the bottom, glue the edge 
of the quilt bat batting to the side of the bed. Wrap it around nice and tight. Trim off any excess. And then run another bead of glue along that edge and secure the batting down with pins. So you should have three layers of batting on the top and one on the bottom. Now, you'll go on and do the same with the headboard and the footboard. So here I've got the headboard. I'm going to wrap it in quilt batting the same way that I wrapped the bed but I don't need as much. So I don't need three layers on one side. For the headboard that will be facing out, I'm gonna have two layers and the rest of the headboard will just have one layer of quilt batting on it. There won't be any on the sides. I won't need it. I'll be folding the fabric over and that will create enough of a cushion to give the effect. Think about what part of your headboard you want to be the top and the bottom. And you'll have to maintain what you do there. So here I'm going to mark it out where the top is. So the bottom part of the headboard that will be touching the floor won't need as much quilt batting or the back that will be touching the wall won't need as much quilt padding as the top and the front. Does that make sense? And of course, I always wrap going over the top, around the back, and up under the bottom. So, same thing as always. I'm running a bead of glue along the bottom, attaching my quilt dotting, wrapping it around tight. And I've cut enough to give myself one layer on the back of quilt batting and two layers on the front. And then I'm gluing and securing. What about all the things you used to say to me? This ain't the way it's supposed to be. And you know... I wouldn't do that to you, you know, I wouldn't treat you that way, no. So your footboard doesn't need much coverage at all with the quilt batting. I was able to just take a little square of it that, I, that was left over and fit perfectly. Doesn't need too much plush, just enough to give the effect. And really easy, I just glued one bead along each edge and wrapped it around. There doesn't need to be any on the bottom, because it's going to be on the floor. And then I secured it with pins. Since I'm going to do some ironing, I went and got a tea towel. This is one of Irish recipes that uh, Auntie Dintma sent me. But uh, you can use anything. You can use an ironing board. <laughs> you can use an ironing pad. I use this. Uh, the glue that I use is water soluble, so I just toss it in the washer if I get anything on it. And now I'm going to press out some fabric to cover the bed in. I've been running, can't catch up. Oh, love, what I won't do. Oh, you got me chasing waterfalls. Oh, you got me chasing waterfalls. All right, next, get your mattress out. 
Um, this piece of fabric just happened to be the right size to fit the mattress almost perfectly. Uh, make sure that your glue is dried. If you saw my previous video, you know I am using a um, tacky glue, so it doesn't have to be completely dry for me to continue to work because it's holding the fabric well. So pull out your pins and uh, you're going to want to wrap your fabric around your mattress. And this is basically you're wrapping a present here. Think about it like any time you've wrapped a present, how have you done it? That's what you're doing here. So you'll want to pull your fabric tight and you want to make sure that your seam where the fabric meets is on the bottom of the mattress. Give yourself enough to uh, make sure you can iron a little hem on the side that's going to be showing if you care about things being tidy. If you don't, then don't worry about it. No one's going to see this seam. It's going to be on the bottom of the mattress. So you do you, baby. Um, get your fabric uh, to the right size. Cut off any excess or tear it off like I'm doing here. I'm a bit of a fabric snob. I only like using cottons. You can use any fabric you want. Now, press a small hem and you're ready to glue it on. I always check time and time again <laughs> where it's lying, how I want it to look, just to double check. And I always like to make sure that my fabric lies the same way that I wrapped my quilt batting. So get your glue. Just run a line of glue up the back or the bottom of the mattress. And glue her on. Wrapping with your pressed hem edge on top. Figure out where that's going to lie and more glue. Now try to get this as tight as you can and secure it with pins. And once you have it pinned into place, if you decide that maybe you don't feel like there's enough glue in there, you can always squirt some more in. Mostly I'm just learning as I go. So this is where wrapping it like a present really comes into play, doing the ends. Oh, look, yes, I guess it needed another little press. Or maybe I just am obsessed with my little tiny iron. Anyway, you know how you wrap a present on the sides, <laughs> how you fold your corners in and then fold up the bottom and fold down the top. Exact same thing. Fold your corners in, fold the bottom up and the top down. I like to fold my top down, give it an extra little fold over so that the edge is tidy. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. These ends will be attached to the headboard and the footboard anyway. No one will see it. It doesn't matter. I just like to do it. I find it makes it attach easier, but I think it's all preference. So then give her a good glue. As you saw, I gave it a press as well. That just helps keep that corner flat so that when you, you don't lose it when you're gluing, essentially. That's just finicky stuff. The ironing and the extra fold, you don't have to do them. Now, as you notice, I didn't put pins in that. That's because I wanted to do the other side. So I wanted to place it flat. I couldn't do that if I had the pins in. As you can see, there's my little fold. Just like wrapping a present. 
And here the iron basically works like that first piece of tape <laughs> that holds everything down. And then whack a load of glue in there. And then you do the same. Well, pin it first and then do the same with the headboard and the footboard. All of the times I've been there, times I came through. I'd meet you anywhere if it brought me closer to you. Distance is killing me, you make it so hard. Won't you let me love you, babe? So, some thoughts on the headboard. Now, if you're using a fabric that has a pattern that runs in a certain direction, you want to be thoughtful about where you cut your headboard out. You want your headboard to run in the right direction with the fabric. So remember, you had a top and a bottom to your headboard, so you want to be aware of that. So, for instance, my fabric here, if I were to cut it the wrong way, then my fish would be swimming in the wrong direction. They would be pointing upward or sideways. So think about that before you cut your fabric. Um, also, if you want to have folded edges like I did on the bed, you make sure that you cut your fabric wide enough to do that. If you don't do that, that's fine. If you don't want to have a folded edge, you can always put a ribbon or a bias binding or something around the edge to cover that. But you do want to make sure that it is wide enough that you can still wrap it like a present, whether you do a nice finished fold or not. But basically, it's the exact same process that you did with the mattress. Used to be optimistic These days I just don't know Pick a fence in the valley I hope it's losing its hold You know the mother girls will love you like I do Can't afford to give up on you And you know I wouldn't do that to you You know I wouldn't treat you that way No I've been running, can't catch up Oh love, what I won't do Oh, you got me Chasing waterfalls Oh, you got me Chasing waterfalls Remember the rules when you move on to your footboard of which way things should lie. You don't want an upside down fish staring back at you at night. And now you should have a headboard, a footboard, and a mattress all wrapped and drying and ready to go for part three of the bed tutorial. Thanks for watching.